what would you say to a new believer to help encourage them to get excited for discipleship, to get excited for church? One of the things I'll often ask is, do you want God's blessing on your life? Blessed is he that readeth, there's a blessing for reading, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, there's a blessing for hearing the preaching, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. There's also a blessing for obeying the Bible. So God says there's a blessing for reading the Bible, there's a blessing for hearing the Bible preached, and there's a blessing when you choose to obey the law of God. He will bless you, He will not correct you. And you know, when somebody first gets saved, I think it's important that if you have the time for, dis for doorstep discipleship, that you let them know what Jesus said is the last commandment. What was the last thing that Jesus said to all believers? Well, let's look at Matthew 28, where we started, verse number 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Right, so somebody that just gets newly saved, I think it is good to take them to the Great Commission. And what I'm going to show you here, and you may want to take notes on this, but what I want to show you is the Baptism Road. This is a series of verses that you can use to help instruct somebody to take the second step, which is to be baptized. And I think it, it, it starts right here with Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So Jesus has instructed us first to preach the gospel to others, secondly to get baptized, and then number three is to learn the entire Bible. Now look, if somebody just got saved, hey you just got saved, step one was easy. You got saved by faith alone. The next step is to get baptized, and that also is easy. Yep. The third step of learning the entire Bible, that takes a lifetime. Yep. That is a long ordeal, and there's a lot you're going to learn as you go through. So go ahead and get the second step out of the way as well. Instead of waning, instead of holding off, go to Acts chapter 8. So the second step is to get baptized. And you will get God's blessing when you choose to get baptized. That's His promise, that when you obey Him, you will be blessed. And first of all, you need to see that there is a stipulation for baptism. We don't just baptize anybody. There are requirements that must be met to be able to get baptized. We don't just baptize anybody. We don't baptize babies. And, you know, baptism does not save. Some people would teach, well, you're not really saved until you get baptized. That is not what the Bible teaches. You're saved by faith alone. And baptism is just a picture of what happened to Jesus, but also what happened to you. You're in Acts chapter 8. Look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? So he asked this question, Well, what do I need to do to be able to get baptized? Or why can't I get baptized right now? That's the question. And look at the answer, verse 37. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So one of the requirements for baptism is that you are aware of the gospel, you believe the gospel, you're trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, you've made that decision yourself. This is very important because there are a lot of people that were christened as a baby or baptized as a baby, and they have confidence in that. But baptizing babies doesn't save anybody. Amen. In fact, the history of it was for taxation, so they could get your name on a roll and know how much money to try to extract from you. And they will scare Catholics into saying, well, now you need to baptize those babies in case they die, otherwise they won't go to heaven. Well, that's not true. That's not what it says in Matthew 18. That's not what it says about David and Bathsheba's baby, right? The baby goes to heaven. God protects the innocent. So a baby does not need to get baptized. If it does, it doesn't do it any good, spiritually speaking. 
And listen, if you were baptized before you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, before you understood it was faith alone, you need to get rebaptized. Right. Don't trust in baptism, and don't don't trust in baptism that happened before salvation. Because once you're saved and you realize and you know it for sure, then it's time to get baptized. That was the requirement. Look at verse 38. There's a method here. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So they go down in the water, he gets baptized, verse 39, and when they were come up out of the water, so the method of baptism must be going under the water and coming out. This is a picture of Jesus. Go to Acts chapter 10. So, baptism is a picture that Jesus died and went to hell for your sins, and He rose again. It's a picture that you were spiritually dead, and now you're alive forevermore. You have everlasting life. So, a baby cannot make this choice. A baby should not be baptized. The method, so, and most people that baptize babies, they'll sprinkle the baby, or they do that funny dunking sequence. If you've seen the Orthodox that do it, that's not biblical baptism. So, first of all, there was that requirement. What do you have to do to get baptized? You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Then understand this. You're in Acts chapter 10. Go to the end of the chapter. Look at verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. They commanded him to be baptized. Go to Romans chapter 6. So, baptism has a requirement. It has a method. And it is a commandment. Yeah. It is a commandment. So, in Acts chapter 10, he tells you we are commanded to get baptized. It goes right along with what Jesus said in Mark chapter 16, Matthew chapter 28, Acts chapter 1, Luke 24. God wants us to obey His Word. But now we're going to go to Romans chapter 6, and we're going to see that blessing. And you remember how we started, we said, you know, in Revelation 1, do you want God's blessing in your life? Well, blessed is he that readeth. Yep. And they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. If you want God's blessing in your life, you'll obey the commandments of God. And now that you're saved, God wants you to get baptized. That is His commandment. Look at verse number 1. We're going to start in, in Romans chapter 6, verse number 1. Well, we're going to see that baptism is a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid... How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now imagine yourself on the doorstep, right? The goal here is doorstep discipleship. Once somebody gets saved and you're talking to them, whether it's in an elevator or in a house or at work, what should you instruct them? Well, that God has given us a great commission. If we want His blessing, we obey His Word. He's commanded us to be baptized. There are requirements. If they meet these requirements, then I think it's good to show them in Romans chapter 6 what a new believer should do. First of all, a new believer, he's saying, shall we continue in sin? Hey, now that you're saved by faith alone, if you want God's blessing on your life, you should stop sinning. You should get rid of the things in the old life. You should stop walking in the flesh and stop walking with old friends and start searching the commandments of God. Start being with the people of God. Now that you're saved, start obeying God in every aspect of your life for a great blessing from God. Amen. Verse number 3, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death. Right? He's talking about the representation that Christ died for our sins. Our sins are forgiven, right? And He rose again. That's the second half of baptism. Look at verse 4. Therefore we are buried with Him by baptism unto death, that, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. When somebody gets baptized, that's what we say, that they should walk in newness of life. Now that you get saved, you've obeyed the gospel. Now that you get baptized, you've obeyed that commandment. Now you should learn all the commandments. You should keep those things which are written therein, right? You should learn all things whatsoever He's written unto us, right? You should learn the entire Bible and obey 
what you see. And there is a blessing for walking in newness of life. And listen, when you got saved, you have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life now. Now you have the ability to stop the old sin. Now you have the ability to get rid of the old friends. Now you have a chance to hit the reset button in your life, and God has given you great spiritual power, but you need to use it. Yep. It's still their choice, and we need to compel them. We need to encourage them. Look, we're in the likeness of His resurrection. Look at this. We're going to see this in verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall also be in the likeness of His resurrection. Hey, you have a new spirit now? You, should, you will live forever, and one day you will be resurrected and have a new body. You should live like that now. You should live more like a heavenly person. It's time to live for Him now. Forget about the old life and, you know, just start obeying. Learning what He says and obey it. Look at verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Listen, we've been given forgiveness of all sins. We've been granted forgiveness of all sins, and we now have the power to have a new life, to walk in newness of life. We should not serve sin. We should not continue in sin. God forbid. 